Welcome everyone, I am Michael, your host for Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the book of Enoch, the prophet. This is the revised summary discussion of part three. The Poetic Technique and Mathematics The third part of the book of Enoch, the prophet, was difficult to convert into a poetic format because the content is not the same as the rest of the book. The ancient English translation of the even older Ethiopic manuscript might seem very nonsensical to most readers. And the prophecies in this third part use numerological encryptions, which are unusually perplexing to solve. Applying research results for several words referencing such concepts as phases of the sun, moon, wind, and other numerical clues resulted in poetry incorporating modern explanations for these celestial cycles based on Enoch's ancient descriptions. The author's research revealed interesting discoveries. There are 12 phases of the sun, 8 phases of the moon, and 12 categories for the wind, precisely as Enoch says there are. Also, it is understandable that there are 364 days in a year, with an extra day added to each year and one day remaining for a leap year. Enoch has a rather humorous way to account for the number of days in a year, but there may have been an alternate purpose for this curiously funny mathematical riddle. The hidden purpose of the riddle may have been to present a prediction of a future event that Enoch could not fully understand. The prophetic vision a prophet receives from God is not always completely comprehensible to him because the prophecy comes from God, not solely from the man's mind. There can be interference from the man's own thoughts that cause a prophecy to be like a riddle, But the truth within the message from God will always come through because the Holy Spirit guides true believers to know the truth. Enoch's curiously encrypted numerical sequences seem to have correlations to historical events. Enoch did not have any understanding of how modern historians would determine the accounting of years, and he lived in a time thousands of years before Christ. However, Enoch's writing seems to have predicted an event occurring in 1346 AD. That could have been the egregious error of men who plundered the gold from the Ark of the Covenant to fund 100 years of war in Europe. 1346 AD was also the beginning of the Black Plague, and men made many errors during that plague. Enoch could not be specific in his prophecy because he would not have completely understood his vision, but he knew there was a significance to this numerical sequence which appears more than once in this part of the book. Repeating this reference emphasizes its significance and Enoch knew that something significantly bad was going to happen. It was a significant error of mankind to plunder a holy relic. The Ark of the Covenant Theoretically, the Knights Templar captured the ancient treasures of the Judean kings of old and took them back to England during the time of the Crusades. The treasures remained hidden until King Edward found them during a time of internal strife within England. King Edward used the gold stripped from the Ark of the Covenant to fund his wars with Scotland and France, and this mistake also unleashed God's wrath with the Black Plague. Edward had renewed his conquest with mysteriously found wealth after initially failing to wage a successful military campaign a few years earlier due to a lack of funds. Historians have completely ignored the oddity of how a destitute post-Crusade monarch was able to fund a war that would ultimately last for 100 years. The English crown was practically destitute prior to this time because of King Edward's financial and military failures, so there is no other reasonable explanation for him to suddenly have enough wealth to engage in warfare and conquest. The gold and jewels Edward used to pay for his conquest came from the Ark of the Covenant. The author cannot prove this theory with any physical evidence other than the curiously unexplainable numerical sequence appearing in this ancient text. There are no other significant historical occurrences in the year 1346 AD that might provide a reasonable basis for an important prediction about this year to appear in an ancient text other than the plague, which begins at that time. There are many books and theories available today that attempt to explain what happened to the ancient relic and where it might be if it has not been plundered or destroyed. However, not one of those other books have produced any conclusively physical evidence to prove their theories either. 
The Ark of the Covenant has not been found in modern times, nor will it ever be found because it has been completely plundered by heretic Christians. The scripture in Revelations also says that the Ark of the Covenant will appear in a temple that opens in the heavens. See Revelations chapter 11 verse 19. This passage is a prophecy that explains what happened to the holy relic, and it proves that the Ark of the Covenant is no longer on the earth. It only exists in heaven within God's heavenly temple because mankind destroyed the one God commanded Moses to make on earth as a physical representation of God's covenant with mankind. As appears in the author's narrative inject, pagan Christian heretics plundered the holiest of holies to fund a war in Europe that lasted 100 years. John's revelation predicted the plundering of the Ark of the Covenant because he saw it existing only in heaven. And the correlation of these two prophecies provides proof that this third part of Enoch's book was not a fabrication of some later interloping editor who might have endeavored to make adjustments to Enoch's prophecies after the events occurred. It could be argued that this mysterious numerical sequence within the text of the ancient manuscript was an attempt to add some new details that might lend credibility to the book of Enoch the prophet, which would make the entire text questionable as a fraud. However, this third component of the five-part book has correlative text in the first two parts that substantiate this numerical information as having inclusive necessity. Enoch describes being instructed on the cosmology of the luminaries by the archangel Uriel, and this third section is clearly his telling of it all in more detail. Mathematics are eternal in the universe. Curiously, one of the things Enoch found important to tell Methuselah was this numerical sequence of 1, 3, 4, and 6. The entire explanation about 364 days in a year becomes a cover for a significant prediction of a future event. Enoch creates this mystery when discussing the number of days in a year because his description seems erroneous. The various numerical references in this section are mathematically perfect. The only numerical sequence that seems out of place is 1, 3, 4, and 6. This numerical sequence seems completely meaningless and not an enumeration of anything else relevant to Enoch's discussion about the number of days in a year. A possible clue to understanding the significance of this number is in the word gate. And this word is also a cryptological metaphor for a door. As appears in the poetic retelling, there are six gates. In modern understanding, a gate could also refer to a binary position, and there are four gates in this six-gate numerical sequence. Binary refers to one of two conditions, which is either one or zero, and the binary equivalent to the decimal number sequence 1346 is 1010100010. An 11 digit number. Enoch's numerical sequences are in decimal format, which arranges numbers from 0 to 9. Because this four position numerical sequence appears twice, it seems reasonable to propose squaring the four digit base. The result is a 16 base mathematical concept known as hexadecimal. If the purpose of this duplicated numerical sequence is to refer to a hexadecimal number, then the binary equivalent is 10011010000110, a 13 digit number. When combining the number of digits in both of these converted numerical equivalents, the total number of binary gate digits becomes 24, which also happens to be the exact number of hours in a day. It is one day that seems to be curiously missing in Enoch's accountability of the total number of days in a year. However, this cursory theory has only had the purpose of introducing how Enoch might have been aware of binary mathematics, and it does not insist that this calculation is an explanation of that missing day in Enoch's calculation of days in a year. An alternate calculation of the numerical sequence is also possible when continuing to apply the theory that these gates are references to binary mathematics. When considering that Enoch only discusses the first six binary positions of a typically eight digit binary sequence that forms a byte in computer code, the sequence of binary numbers then becomes 
10110100, which has the decimal equivalent of 180. Half the circumference of a circle, which has 360 degrees. Additionally, the passage in this segment of poetry originating in the text within the English translation of the Ethiopic manuscript also presents a numerical reference to 177. Within the text of the poetic decryption, there seems to be a proposed calculation for this number being the sum of 25 multiplied by 7 plus 2, which does equal 177. Then there is the curious suggestion that says to decrease the sixth gate by 1. If applying this suggestion to the binary code as explained above, the resulting 10110000 is equivalent in decimal format to 176, which is one less than 177, or decreased by 1 as suggested. Because the gate sequence occurs twice in this segment, doubling the decimal equivalent of 10110100 becomes 360. In the interest of discovery, this analysis could go on forever, and the reader might not ever come any closer to solving the mystery of the missing one day that makes a year 365 days long, instead of how Enoch argues that it is 364 days long. Initially, the author postulated that the reasoning for a year being 364 days in the time of Enoch was that it truly was 364 days long. Notwithstanding the mathematical calculations Enoch used to determine the days in a year, understandably, the impact of a comet around 14,000 years ago could have slowed the Earth's momentum enough that it has been circling the Sun at a rate of 365 days since that time. It is a scientific fact that the Earth's momentum of travel around the Sun is decreasing over time, but slowing down an entire day takes millions of years. It is not likely that Enoch lived millions of years ago on Earth, but it is more plausible to accept a theory that a comet strike could have slowed the Earth's momentum in its movement around the Sun while not disturbing its independent rotational speed. Any number of scientific experiments or mathematical calculations in the field of physics might be able to prove this to be possible, but the author is not a mathematician or a physicist. Interpreting the numerical sequence as a prediction of a future event has been a matter of the author's vision when first reading and studying the English translation of the Ethiopic manuscript as a literary scholar and poet. Prior to doing more thorough research into the events of 1346 AD, the author's initial interpretation was that the numerical sequence was a prediction of a time when men would greatly err with respect to a luminary. The luminary, according to this theory, was the gold on the exterior of the Ark of the Covenant, and the error was the plundering of that holy relic by the Knights Templar. The author's research confirmed that some particularly curious events took place in 1346 AD. However, it is with some concession offered in this argument that the assumption of this theory might have been the result of a psycholinguistic manipulation. It occurs implanted in the copies retrieved by James Bruce when he explored Assyria in a time that was most definitely post-Crusade. The possibility exists that a copy and scribe in a later time period from the time of Enoch might have endeavored to inject a curse into this part of the text when making the copies. If that is the case, then this spill was very intelligently done for it to have included the concepts of binary mathematics. It is reasonably possible for binary mathematics to have been fraudulently included in the manuscripts that James Bruce recovered because binary mathematics were discovered in Europe by Gottfried Leibniz in approximately 1679. However, it was not likely that anyone of the time period living in Assyria would have been educated enough to inject this advanced mathematical concept into some ancient Ethiopic writings for the purpose of creating an elaborate hoax. The purpose of discussing this matter specifically is to prove through its obvious conclusion that Enoch had been educated on advanced binary mathematics by the extraterrestrials who abducted him. If binary mathematics are clearly known by other sentient beings throughout the universe, then binary mathematics become a universal means for communication. The basic concept of binary mathematics is that there is a two condition calculation, one or zero, which is also known as a gate being open or closed. 
If Enoch's purpose for enumerating a decimal sequence is to encrypt a binary equivalent, then the sequence of 1 in the first gate, 1 in the third gate, 1 in the fourth gate, and 1 in the sixth gate has a six-digit binary equivalent of 101101. Enoch's explanation is truly about the number of days in a year overall, but this discussion might just have the purpose to conceal a prophecy about a particular year. The decimal equivalent of 101101, a six-digit binary number, is 45. It was in 45 BC that Julius Caesar ordered the creation of a solar calendar comprised of three years, having 365 days in a year, with an extra day in the fourth year for 366 days. If Enoch used binary mathematics to make a prediction about an event in a future year, an event that would ultimately contradict his own calculations of the number of days in a year, then that year could have been 45 BC. However, other scholars who have studied the text have determined that the Enochian calendar has 364 days because of his erroneous calculation of days based upon the cycles of the moon. None of them have ever considered that Enoch had a knowledge of binary mathematics. Still, there is a curious significance to the numerical sequence of 1346 if it was not a binary representation of 45. King Edward's inexplicably newfound wealth in 1346 enabled England to wage war for 100 years. Combined with the beginning of the Black Plague, there are two historical events supporting the author's theory that this numerical sequence is a prediction of an event in the distant future from the time of Enoch. Although there does not exist any physical evidence to completely validate the premise. On the other hand, performing a further mathematical analysis of this curious numerical sequence at least suggests that Enoch was quite the mathematician, and he was extremely accurate about the number of days in a year during a time when no other person had written anything about this topic. He must have been laughing when he told all this to Methuselah because he may have known how much argument this riddle would have caused. Enoch never died. The second canto in this third part reveals a previously hidden truth about Enoch. Modern biblical scholars will agree that Enoch was taken away by God for his faith, but none of them have ever considered that he might have returned the same as Elijah or Jesus. The book of Genesis says that God took Enoch away, but Moses never writes anything about his return. Moses grew up being educated as an Egyptian, so he was a heathen Gentile compared to other Hebrews who were educated about Yahweh from childhood. Moses would not have been willing or able to admit that Enoch had received everlasting life. God would not and did not transfigure Moses with everlasting life because Moses was a murderer. And God did not reveal the promise of everlasting life to Moses because he was not eligible to follow the path of angels or to receive everlasting life. Modern biblical scholars will insist that Moses was present at Christ's transfiguration because the cursed Holy Bible says so. Those biblical scholars who continue to insist on biblical inerrancy are clearly not all that smart, particularly when the information in the text they insist is inerrant proves them wrong. Enoch's transfiguration enabled him to return to the earth to educate his son Methuselah after he had learned what the Watchers taught him. It was going to take some time for that comet originating in the Oort Cloud to reach Earth, and Enoch traveled with the Watchers while waiting for the Earth's destruction by water to occur. Enoch's great-grandson would be fully grown and have a family of his own by the time the comet reached Earth, and Enoch was able to return to Earth on multiple occasions because he lives eternally. The concept of traveling backwards or forwards in time becomes exposed as a fallacy because prophecy is not time travel. And Enoch could not travel forwards nor backwards in time. He had to wait for things to happen, and he could not change the past either. God created everything in the universe, and the dimension of time as we know it does not apply to Almighty God who is eternal. The laws of physics as known to humanity do not apply to God. Scientists are only beginning to understand how our knowledge of physics is not complete 
and the evidence of this truth may be seen in study of images from the past. While we cannot know the future beyond estimating some occurrences within the view of our own solar system, we are able to see the past from images taken by four telescopes, Hubble, Kepler II, Tess, and James Webb. Almighty God knows all things from the beginning to eternity. In the extraterrestrial originating eternally spiritual beings known to all of mankind as angels were given the ability to see future events known only to God. Still, God does not make it possible for angels to know everything because only God can know all things. The abduction of Enoch was by God's design and God tasked those angels to provide Enoch with information about future events in order to ensure the success of the CE6 event designed to correct the course of human evolution after it had been altered by the errant extraterrestrials who had descended to the earth and corrupted mankind. The abduction of Enoch had the purpose of educating him in preparation for his task of teaching and informing the descendants of the original man named Adam about God's plan to correct the evolution of humanity by confining the fallen watchers and destroying their abominated offspring. The watchers had shown Enoch how that was going to happen by taking him into space and letting him see it all for himself. Enoch's abduction occurred with enough time in advance that he would have to let his sons know what was going to happen. But their understanding of these mysteries in the universe was minimal without the same kind of educational experience Enoch received while he was with the watchers. When the watchers returned Enoch to earth, they cautioned him with a warning about his physical appearance. He did not look the same as he did before he left. The watchers warned him about this problem by telling him to inform his family that no flesh shall be justified before the Lord. There are a few possible explanations for what this statement means. One explanation is that it could mean Enoch's physical appearance changed when he traveled through space with the watchers. This theory assumes that Enoch's spirit was not separated from his physical body and space travel could have altered his physical appearance. Modern astronauts will confirm that physiological adaptation to weightlessness occurs while living in space for an extended period of time. Specifically, muscular atrophy is at least one possible adaptation clearly alluded to when the angels told Enoch they would allow him to regain his strength before they returned for him. If modern astronauts did not exercise regularly while living in space, their muscles would atrophy because of weightlessness. There are also the effects of cosmic radiation on the human body that can cause irreversible mutation as the body attempts to adapt to exposure. If it is even possible for human survival in space over a long period of time, the human body will physiologically adapt to the imposed demands. The precise amount of Earth time elapsing in Enoch's absence might be calculable from numerical clues in the text, however, it is reasonable to postulate that he was gone from the Earth for more time than astronauts will spend in space before returning in order to prevent permanent physiological changes or damages. Some of those brave men and women who have lived in space may have experienced irreversible physiological changes that are not made known to the public. Well, that is all the time we have for this episode. The summary discussion of Part 3 will continue in the next episode. Be sure to subscribe for notifications of new releases. Thank you for listening. I am Michael.